All right, folks, we're gonna get together here and call the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello. So we have before us um, contract one, which is performing arts apparel instruments and equipment. Yes, this contract modification will provide equipment, furnishings, and supplies related to performing arts, music, and theater education. Approval is requested to increase spending authority by $150,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $350,000. All right. We have questions. All right, our second contract is the Music Studio Spotlight on Music. This is a new contract to provide instructional materials for grades K through five and professional development for teachers. Approval is requested for a six year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $1,417,663. Questions? Just a comment, Mr. Stewart. Um, there was a presentation made in the curriculum committee meeting, and it was surprising how long it's been since we purchased uh, textbooks or updated textbooks for the music uh, instruction. And I think it was something incredible, like 30 years. Yeah, so uh, the textbooks are well needed. I, I just wanted to mention that. Does this get us anywhere close to kind of being where we need to be? Or is this making up some lost ground, but we still have ground to make up? Good afternoon. Um, this is going to get us right where we need to be in alignment with the National Core Art Standards that are now the Maryland State Standards for Fine Arts. Um, it's uh, much more reflective of being culturally diverse and more modern in terms of the music selections. It provides our students with ample opportunities to develop music literacy because they also have an opportunity to compose using the tools that come. So we have class materials, but we also have digital materials where students can actually um, compose music, change key to reflect tone and mood. Um, so this is a, a great step in getting us where we need to be for our music program. Mm, okay. Scossie. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Great, great. I was just wondering, what is the relative ratio between the number of textbooks and the digital access? Is it a sign-in per each child? Is yep. it just used in the classroom? So students will have individual access to the digital materials, and then there will be class sets of the um, anthologies, they're called, with the textbooks, if you will. So in the class set, is it one per student, or is it less than that? It, um, I think the class sets, we were just trying to do some math because it was in the aggregate, so it would not be one per student because it would not necessarily be used all at the same time. Okay. Do you know uh, what We the estimate is? around 15 per class, so it's usually one to two for the textbooks. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Mr. Joelfoner. Thank you. Just one question. Um, professional, professional development. Uh, what, uh, what component of this total is, is it broken down or is it? So, so actually the professional development um, is included. It's not a separate cost. So it's included as part of the contract in that we contract with the um, textbook and the um, professional development resource teachers that work with it. Um, so the original total for professional development is actually part of what's um, considered free materials that's included with the purchase. So in the initial quote, um, professional development was around $20,000, but then it winds up being free with the purchase of the materials. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> uh, this might be a question um, for somebody else, but I'm going to take the liberty to just maybe put it out there. Are there other areas of our curricula that we have kind of a, the significant of a deficit that needs to be made up uh, aside from music? Um, In terms of textbook purchases, yeah. yes, Incur you will see us coming before you. Um, it was a big part of our one-time ask with MSCE in terms of, for example, American government is another one that we have textbooks that need to be replaced, especially with the changing nature of the world geography, as it were. So yes, there are other areas in which we need to play some catch up and also in which standards have been updated or assessments have changed, which requires us then to revise curriculum. And then we, through 6002, look for materials to support that revision of curriculum. 
So we're looking with a kind of a renewed focus on trying to update our materials. Sure. All right. Ms. Causey. Um, just one other question related to the number of units that we're going to be buying both in the textbooks and the digital access. Is there a discount off of the standard because we're such a large system? Do you know what that discount ratio is? The, there, uh, at the state level, there are really no discounts uh, per se. The uh, savings that we've been able to achieve in years past have been on uh, shipping and handling or professional development, uh, as Megan mentioned. Um, but you, you really would have to be the size of a Texas or a Florida or a California and purchase for as a state rather than as a school district to get much different pricing than we're getting here. Okay, thank you. Further questions? All right, seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you very much. Okay. Athletic training services is our third item for tonight. This is a new competitively bid contract for athletic training services for the Department of Curriculum Operations. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended award bidder and contract spending authority of $1,675,000. Questions? Ms. Causey. Mr. Sarris, how were the schools uh, decided that would be provided these services? Because it's not all um, 24 of our high schools. It's the 17 schools that do not already have uh, an arrangement for athletic trainers. And we sought bids from vendors who would be willing to serve all 17 of those schools. Okay. and so. We're confident that this uh, provider has the staffing and expertise to help all of these schools with their sports We programs. are confident. Uh, we're going to start out, I believe, with eight in the first year, and uh, but they are the only bidder that committed to serving all 17 schools in their proposal. Okay, and is this one of the types of contracts that is um, going to be required to have a performance evaluation since it's over $500,000? Yes. Okay, so that's an evaluation that'll be coming to the board. What, what time frame do you think the evaluation would be? Uh, I believe we do it annually, assuming that the new policy and rule is finalized. Okay, thank you. Do we know what as needed means in this context? Uh, the number of hours per week will vary based on the season and the, the school and the various teams that they field, and so uh, it will vary, but it, it could be uh, up to 32 hours a week per school under this arrangement. Okay. Other questions? Ms. Causey. So the funding source is the operating budget. Does it come out of the central office operating budget for school um, yes, the or athletics? Yes, it's been budgeted in the athletics office. Okay, so the six schools, or excuse me, the, the remaining schools that have their own um, arrangement right now, that's also coming out of the athletic yes, budget? The, the uh, extra duty activities are paid centrally okay, through great. payroll. That, okay, thank you so much. All right, our fourth contract is Center for Innovation and Leadership and Special Education Fellowship. This is a new cooperative administration of programs contract to provide a teaching fellowship for BCPS special educator in neurodevelopmental disabilities. Approval is requested for a one-year contract or with one recommended vendor and contract spending authority of $50,000. Questions? Causey. Thank you. Um, so in the description, it refers to one employee that will be undertaking this training. Is that correct? It's just one employee? Correct. 
is that employee already identified or will there be a selection process in the future? Uh, a nomination and selection process has already occurred. Okay, thank you. Okay. Our fifth contract is document imaging equipment. This is a new cooperative contract to provide leased production copier equipment, maintenance parts, software, and supplies for the offices of copy and print services and business management information systems. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $2,478,470. All right, questions? Mr. McDaniels. Mr. Stewart. Mr. Saris, could you just desc describe our current um, situation in terms of our print services? Are, are we coming to the end of a five-year contract with someone else, or how, yes. how, how are we uh, doing our so, so these are all of our high-volume equipment. Uh, used for producing multiple page documents in large numbers, uh, as well as all of the letters and mass mailings that the system has for health care benefits, uh, retirement, W-2s, et cetera. And uh, th we currently, we have had Xerox equipment, and we are uh, going to retain that equipment using the state uh, De Department of General Services contract and um, for a five-year period. So the prior contract was not connected with the state contract? It was the same state, state contract, state. and we are going to continue to use that. All right, thank you. Yep. Questions? Ms. Causey. Thank you. Does this contract affect the schools? <coughs> No, this is just the uh, Division of Communications and their Office of Copy and Print Services and uh, administra Division of Administrative Service, Department of Administrative Services and the uh, Information Technology Group uh, located in this building. Okay, so the amount, the average annual expenditures, so you're projecting an increase in the amount used or the expenditures on an annual basis going forward, a slight increase? A slight increase, yes. Okay. And what do you attribute that to? Just there the is a, there's a CPI provision in the state contract, and so we've uh, projected that over this term. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. Our next contract is number six, fingerprinting and background investigation services. Uh, this is a contract modification to provide uh, consent uh, to the assignment of this contract from Morpho Trust to Idemia Identity and Security USA LLC. There's one vendor on the original contract approved by the board uh, in 2007 and this is actually a corporate name change, uh, and the vendor requested that we change their name in all of our agreements, in all of their agreements. Any questions? All right. Our next contract, at number seven, the psychological evaluations. This is a contract modification to provide psychological evaluations for the Office of Employee Absence and Risk Management. Approval is requested to increase spending authority by $65,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $215,000. And just remind us the basis of the increase, or why it's uh, been. It's, it, the, um, it, we're billed on an hourly basis, and the number of incidents that require an evaluation for various accommodations has increased. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Questions? Ms. Gauzy. Thank you. So next we have a different contract for a different service 
psychiatric evaluations. This service seems to be used by the Office of Employee Absence and Risk Management to help the office decide and support the need to suggest a path for an employee. Is that fair the, to say? The current contract. The, yes. the next one involves a medical doctor and that, and that individual is more often involved in the need for an independent medical evaluation. Okay, great. I just wanted to try and understand the distinction between those two. Thank you. And this next one is a new contract? Yes. Right. Okay, further questions on item seven, which is our current contract. All right, item eight, psychiatric so this, evaluations. Yes, this is a new competitively bid contract for psychiatric evaluations for the Office of Employee Absence and Risk Management. Approval is requested for a three-year contract with the option for two one-year extensions with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $125,000 and this spending authority is based only on the three-year period, we would uh, come back to the board to request an extension. Do we have a sense of how frequently these services are employed? I think I'll need to defer to Dr. Mayo or Dr. Allen or another doctor of some <laughs> kind. Good afternoon. Um, it's, it's hard to really gauge, uh, Mr. Stewart, to just the first contract was more or less for fitness, a fit for duty, and this is more intensive when we have to use our psychiatrist. Um, so we've been using this particular psychiatrist since 2005. Um, so it's hard to really determine or tell you exactly how often we're util utilizing. Of course, during the school year, of course, it's more frequent simply because we have more employees working during that time period. Okay. So, but we have a sense given our long history with this individual as to how much we expect to spend or how much is gonna be required to spend. Okay, further questions? All right, our next contract, thank you, Dr. Mayo, is item nine, online survey platform. So this is a new competitively bid contract to provide a web-based survey platform for the Department of Research, Accountability, and Assessment. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $339,000. Okay, questions? Mr. McDaniels. Um, Mr. Saris, I noticed we decided not to renew the contract uh, that we had. Was that with a dim different vendor? Um, yes. And were we dis dissatisfied in any way with their performance or what, or this was just a better proposal? Uh, we were able to obtain a more robust product at a lower price. That's a good thing. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. No survey monkey for us then. Correct. Okay. Ms. Causey. Thank you. So you said that we are receiving a more robust product at a lower cost? Correct. I remember when the previous contract came before us, I want to say maybe three years ago, and I asked the question at the time and I'll ask it again. This, this survey platform, since it is more robust, it can be used by a number of different departments. Is that correct? Uh, I'm going to have to defer to Dr. Brown on that level of detail. Well, uh, the primary purpose uh, for this product is to support the collection of information for the Office of Research and Evaluation and the Office of Strategic Planning around our boundary processes. Um, we use it specifically for the stakeholder survey and also the collection of information around evaluation activities and again, uh, strategic planning for, for engagement around uh, the boundary process, the high school study, et cetera. So if this is a robust product, it could also be used, for instance, by Department of Human Resource to pull teachers in terms of um, issues of improvement, retention, job satisfaction, that sort of thing? We have used uh, a product for data collection purposes across the organization, uh, again, generally organized through the Office of Research and Evaluation. So is it that other departments have a need or a, 
have a need or a preference to get input from one or more stakeholders, whether it's employees internally or externally, and they would process that request for information through your office? Correct. Uh, one of the things that we've been very sensitive to over time is the impact of surveys, uh, survey fatigue, survey time on employees and or our students. And so we route those through the Office of Research and Evaluation to protect staff time. <laughs> so. so how many surveys have been done in the past year or two for teachers? I don't have that number. Okay. But so it is possible to have multiple purposes for this one product. We have used it to collect information from a variety of stakeholders over time. Again, it's run through the Office of Research and Evaluation, uh, again, to protect instructional time and to protect staff from um, an overwhelming number of surveys. We have quite a few folks who would love to survey uh, our students, our staff, uh, and uh, our teachers on a regular basis. It, it, could be pretty overwhelming. Okay, so the board, if in the future the board wanted to have a specific survey done uh, for input externally or internally, it could be handled through your office with this new product. We could work with the superintendent and the, the board in terms of determining how to leverage a product to do that sort of work, but I would leave that to the superintendent's discretion to, to work that out. Okay, thank you. Item 10 is our tree pruning and removal and associated services. Yes, this is a contract modification to provide tree pruning and removal services for the Department of Facilities Management. Approval is requested to increase spending authority by $200,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $500,000 with the three awarded vendors approved by the board in 2014, and this is simply a request to for additional spending authority based on the more frequent incidences of storm damage and the need to remove trees. So this is a lot of trees. Yes. Our this cooperation is with Baltimore County government, can you speak to that? All those types of services? Uh, uh, the tree removal is done by us. Uh, county uh, requires sometimes for forestation purposes to plant trees, but when it comes to removing trees, we are on our own. Okay, it's causing. I just wanted okay. to ask, it is a large increase. How much could you attribute of that to construction that we're undergoing in the tremendous construction plan that we've been undertaking and or uh, storm related? We've had quite a few significant storms in winter summer, spring and fall. So I'm just curious, to what would you attribute this increase? Good question. None of it is construction related because any trees that are removed under the capital program, they are part of the construction contract. Uh, most of it, it is due to storm. There's a lot more storm. The ground is more saturated than it has ever been before. And there was also uh, State Department of Forestry asked us to remove about 70 ash trees because of the ash borer bug, because of the disease the trees had. So that added to the workload. So none of it is construction. All of it is additional work, storm-related, and some special request. Oh, Mr. McDaniels, I saw a second. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, there's one Ohio-based company on here, and um, I was wondering if they're utilizing Maryland workers. Do they have uh, offices in Maryland, or it just, they are, Mar right. They have an office adjacent to uh, the Lake Roland facility at the end of Lake Avenue okay. and Falls Road. So we're not bringing Ohioans in to move. That's the corporate more. headquarters. Okay, all right, thank you. Jill Feller. Um, from experience, an average tree costs 800 to to $1,000 to take and remove. And unfortunately, we have lots of older trees because the dozen trees that used to be in front of Fort Garrison are all gone by now yeah. uh, over the years. So it, it's a combination of storms, older trees having to be removed and costs going up per tree. Mm. Cost is 9, it's causing. I just had two last quick questions. 
Originally in December 16, 2014, was this contract competitively bid? bid? Um, let's see here. I don't have that in my notes. Let me see if Ms. Webster or somebody from purchasing can yes, answer. Yes, it was. That. Okay, it was thank competitively bid. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And the last question is, we are losing a lot of trees, as you mentioned, and or with forestry department asking us to remove those ash trees. What's being done in terms of replacing them, planting new trees? We know for our environment it's very important to have trees, also even in terms of cooling the buildings and so forth. So I'm just curious what plan do we have or is that something that we need to develop? As part of the construction project, uh, we have to comply with the county regulation and have a forestation plan, especially if we decide to cut trees. And also there are countywide programs for improving forestation and from time to time they request us to uh, participate in it. So we have been planting trees. Okay, great, thank you. Item 11 is grass seed, fertilizer, and field treatment. This is a new cooperative contract to provide for the purchase of grass seed, fertilizer, and field treatment supplies for the Department of Facilities Management. Approval is requested for a two-year and 10-month contract with three recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $60,000. And in this case, we are uh, using an Anne Arundel County Public Schools contract. Okay, questions? Ms. Causey. Are any or all of these funds for athletic fields? Yes, it's for the seeds and for the fertilizer. And it, does it all go to athletic fields? Including athletic fields and other parts of the facilities. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll move on to item 12. And no surprise, we're doing grounds maintenance equipment. Uh, this is a new cooperative contract to provide the purchase of two Bobcat mini skid loaders for the Department of Facilities Management. Approval is requested for a nine month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $40,000. And we're using a uh, Sourcewell Consortium, formerly National Joint Powers Alliance contract. So we don't own bobcats right now, we just lease them. This is a specialized type of bobcat. This is used for the playgrounds. So and we have been renting this. Uh, this has the flexibility of going underneath the playground equipment. So it's a specialized bobcat equipment. Okay. Other questions? Ms. Causey. Just noting the change in the name from National Joint Powers Alliance to Sourcewell. Don't we have other purchasing that's done through them, will there be a modification for those other contracts and equipment that we have formally gotten through National Joint Powers Alliance? Um, I don't know if w we may have other contracts. Let me ask Ms. Webster if a name change is required. Good afternoon again. If the contract was awarded to National Joint Powers Alliance, yes, we would be bringing it back for a modification. If it was like this one is awarded to Clark Equipment, if this had been done in the past, we would not be bringing it back because the contract is with Clark Equipment. But with the pricing and terms available through now Sourcewell, is that yeah. fair to say? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I think we're okay. All right, so that um, wraps up the items that we needed to consider. Do I have a motion to recommend to the full board for its approval items L1 through L12? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor, raise your hands. Very good, it's unanimous. Uh, the work of the Building Contracts Committee is concluded. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies.